So actually that's probably clear enough for now. Excellent. Well, good morning everyone and welcome and congratulations for finding us here in the Sturt campus. It's always the, the first big tick um, of joining a new degree here at Flinders. Um, quick uh, uh, acknowledgement, we've got a few people in the room here with us today joining us with some of the undergrad dis disability programs and also a quick hello to the people who are going to be watching our recording uh, a little bit later. So uh, we've got students who join our degrees uh, across Australia. Um, so we've got a, a wonderful combination of both internal and online students. So welcome everyone. Um, I'm going to uh, start off by uh, uh, an acknowledgement of country. So uh, Flinders University acknowledges the traditional owners and custodians of the lands on which its campuses are located. Um, and we can see um, them listed here across Australia. Uh, excellent. So uh, just very briefly, uh, my name is Michelle Bellon and I'm the undergraduate course coordinator for each of our four nested undergraduate programs here in disability. Um, I kind of see myself as born and bred Flinders. <laughs> um, I was sitting where you guys are sitting back in 1996 with my colleague Jamie sitting back there as well too, I reckon. Um, so Jamie and I have been uh, working here for... Um, oh gosh, I don't, yeah, I don't know, what's that? I can't do maths. Yeah, it's a very long time. It's a big chunk of our life. Um, love Flinders. Very, very, very lucky to uh, have my study and my career launched here. Um, so uh, I did an earlier iteration of um, um, our degree. Our degree, we're actually going to be celebrating 40 years of disability courses here at Flinders University this year. Um, but uh, disability um, and community inclusion here at Flinders is, um, you know, it, it, it's a incredibly unique and um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's been very um, more than persistent. It's 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 the longest disability uh, studies program in Australia, um, and we're very very proud of the the growth that we've um, and, and the impact that we've had. Um, but just very quickly about myself, um, I'm the course coordinator, which means uh, I'm here to support you with all matter of your progress with your studies, um, with your time here at Flinders, um, from study plans to career discussions uh, to some of the sticky things around complaints or concerns, or I'm always very, very happy to hear positive feedback as well too. <laughs> but I'm also a, uh, I'm an academic. I'm a disability researcher, so many of the uh, academics that you'll be working with as your teachers and tutors and, um, um, and staff uh, uh, may um, hold dual roles. So they'll be um, education specialists, but um, many are also uh, active researchers in disability and community inclusion as well. So we all hold a lot of different hats and uh, perform a lot of different jobs and also have a lot of um, involvement with different disability community organisations, um, uh, input into the government. Um, but I'm very excited to sort of pass on to our academic lead who probably has the most impact. <laughs> um, and, uh, uh, and that's um, Sally Robinson. So Sally was just mentioning you've been, we're celebrating four years with our discipline. Oh, fantastic, which has gone in a blink of an eye. And anyway, I'll pass over to you, Sally, but thanks very much. So Sally is our big boss. Yeah. <laughs> um, hello, everybody uh, in the room. Hi, everybody online. Um, it's lovely to be here to just welcome you into the degree. Um, uh, I'm Sally Robinson. Um, I'm the academic lead of our discipline. Um, and I have the incredibly fortunate position of working with an amazing team of people here. Um, our team has grown um, over time. Um, as Michelle said, we've been um, going here at Flinders for 40 years. Um, but in the last four years, it's been um, incredible to see what our team has been able to do. It's a very exciting time for you to be starting your studies uh, because it's a very important time to be working in the field um, of disability. Um, you will know, I'm sure, because you're interested in this field, that there is a lot that's not going right for people with disability. 
We've got a Royal Commission into abuse and neglect and violence against people with disability. We've got a review of the NDIS. Um, and, you know, we've got some really large-scale policy things um, about looking into what's not gone right for people with disability. You're here because you want to improve practice. You want things to change in the lives of people with disability in their everyday. And that is such an important thing to be doing uh, because we need to connect what happens up here with what happens down here. And that's what being a disability professional is about, about connecting the big picture, about how we improve people's lives with the practical, about how you do it. And what we've been doing over the last four years is in strengthening our programs so that we make all of those lines connect really well. So um, our four-year undergraduate degree um, is completely reworked um, uh, and it's a really good time to be coming into the four-year program. We have a human rights underpinning. You'll see in every, um, every topic that you do that human rights are fundamental to what we do. Um, scholars with disability are a really important part of our program. You'll see people with disability teach you, you'll see people with disability guest lecture you, you'll see people with disability in leadership positions in our course. I'm a person with disability myself, you'll see other people with disability in other leadership positions. So you'll not only go out of your degree working with people with disability, you'll rethink the place of people with disability in society not only just as people who become clients of the services that you use, but as your co-students, as your colleagues, um, as your bosses. Um, so we're, we're, we're reshaping the way that we think about disability um, in the world and in your practice as professionals. Um, you probably get a sense that I can talk underwater, so I could just take, a, <laughs> take the morning talking to you. Um, I do just want to recommend to you as you go through that you take all the opportunities that you can to really engage as you go through. One of the things that's been a fantastic change over the four years is how many more students we've got coming in from all over the country. Um, and the opportunities that you've got to get to know other um, emerging professionals across the country is a really good one because it builds your practice knowledge, um, it builds your opportunities to move around, it builds your understanding of what's going on in other parts of the country. So really dig in. I know it's a bit intimidating to sort of get on the discussion boards and go, my name's so-and-so and this is what I think. But the more people can do that, the more you can really get in engaged and, and tuck into group work, tuck into the discussion boards, the, it really um, opens up the opportunities for you. Um, so I'd really uh, encourage you to do that at this stage. And I'll just close by saying, um, please don't ever hesitate to, um, to contact us, any of us, uh, any of the people that you meet today. Um, if for some reason uh, you feel like you don't get well received in you, if you contact somebody, don't ever hesitate to contact any of the course coordinators or myself. Our doors are always open to you. Our email is always open to you. We really want to know what you think, um, what you think matters to us. We are very responsive to feedback from students. Um, your feedback matters um, and we um, change what we do in response to student feedback. So we do want to uh, work with you as you go through the degree. So thank you very much for being here. Thank you for being online. Uh, and um, I'll leave you with um, the rest of our team for today. Excellent. Thank you so very much, Sally. Brilliant. I'm very sorry to run, but I have <laughs> no, that's great. So the next person we're going to introduce you to is Cassandra Gibson-Pope. Thank you, Cassandra. Hi, everyone. Um, so I too studied here at Flinders a little earlier than Michelle and Jamie. Um, so I'm a developmental educator as well. I then went off into the world of local government and worked in there for over 20 years. And I've come back here um, also about four years ago. So Sally and I started back here at the same time. Um, but my role is I'm a lecturer in the team, but I'm also the student engagement coordinator. So that means that if you're having any trouble at all in your studies, or you want to know a little bit about university life, or where to go for support or services, you can come back to me um, and I'll point you in the right direction. Or we can just have a chat about your studies and find out where you're, where you're headed or what your difficulties are as well. So I'm here for you to... Conked out <laughs> while you're doing your studies. So welcome everybody online um, and welcome to those of you in the room. Nice to meet you all. Fantastic.
Great. So we also have the pleasure of having um, uh, two more acad um, uh, members of our academic team here with us in the room as well. Um, Jamie, did you want to come up briefly? So Jamie Gardner is the topic coordinator for one of our first year topics in semester two. So you may well see, if you want to just stand on this side, that'll be lovely. Perfect. Um, introduce yourself in person. That might be one wonderful option. <laughs> Thank you. I thought I was just sitting in the crowd like everyone else. Um, so as Michelle said, I'm Jamie Gardner. I'm also the course coordinator for the post-grad program. So Michelle and I work quite closely, but we also work quite closely to support you as first-year students because university is a bit of a different life um, if you haven't come here before and learning to use the new systems and finding things and all of those sort of things, um, we understand that that's pretty tricky. So Michelle and I um, have spent, and Cass as your um, student engagement coordinator, we're all first year um, topic coordinators, so spend quite a lot of time supporting um, new students. Um, so as Michelle said, I also am part of the furniture here. I've been here for a very long time as well. Um, I've been teaching for about probably 15 or 16 years, I suppose, and before that um, there was a service provided here for adults with brain injury that I used to um, be part of. Um, I also have a background in social work as well, so I've done some other bits and pieces um, in the disability sector and also worked in family and domestic violence as well. Um, but really what I'm here for is I will see you probably in the critical issues topic um, this semester coming up as one of your first topics. And then again in perspectives, um, probably perspectives on disability in uh, semester one next year. So welcome. Um, and please, if you have any questions, come and ask someone. It doesn't really matter who you reach out to first, if it's your tutor, if it's one of us, anybody. Um, yeah, just ask questions if you need to so that you feel like you're settling in and get to know um, other students around you because they go on to be your future colleagues. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. That's wonderful. Thank you. And again, one of the most important people in our discipline uh, is Charmaine Ma. Uh, and Charmaine is our placement coordinator. So one of the most critical parts of uh, professional degrees um, is the opportunity to put everything into practice. So uh, placement, um, uh, Charmaine, uh, if you'd like to have a quick introduction, anything you'd like to say about placement? <laughs> well, the first thing I want to tell you about placements is please get your compliance when we ask you to. <laughs> Have that in your minds, everybody. Uh, welcome. Um, I also um, started here later than all of you people. I was a late bloomer. I didn't start my degree till 2003 and Michelle was my lecturer and now she's my boss. So, <laughs> so that's just the path that students can take. Um, I also did some work originally while I was doing my degree with Jamie in the, the program for uh, people with brain injury and then I moved over to doing the placement coordination. So I coordinate most of the placement topics. You won't be seeing me for another two years, I'm thinking. Another year? Quite possibly. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So nice to see all you all here and welcome everybody at home as well. Excellent. And Charmaine's infinitely accessible and uh, one of the most um, open to, to meeting with students and having a cup of coffee here on campus at any point to discuss any concerns or questions about placement. So she's, she's pretty fantastic. Um, excellent. All right then. So we also have um, a, a, a range of undergrad student reps. So um, um, you can contact them all via email and they are so lovely and so responsive as well. So if you do find that you'd like to have a chat to a student rep, please do reach out and um, they would be supremely excited to hear from you and, and discuss any questions or concerns that you may have as well. Fantastic. So like I mentioned before, we've got uh, four nested degrees uh, in our revamped curriculum here at, uh, at Flinders. Um, so we've got, uh, you'll be studying in, 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 in classrooms alongside people who may be engaged in any of these programs, as well as students who are studying other degrees who are picking the, your topics up, our DSRS, our disability topics up as electives, or they may be core in their degree. So it's a wonderful opportunity to be uh, studying and learning in, in a very multidiscipline um, um, environment. So you'll be you know, sitting alongside people, you know, the future physios and OTs and uh, um, people who, you know, may be moving on to medicine later and, you know, a whole range. Um, excellent. So we've, uh, I'm just curious, we've got um, four people in the room at the moment. Olivia's doing the three-year BDCI degree. 
Brooklyn's doing the four-year BDDE degree. I'm Courtney. Courtney. Hi, Courtney. Welcome. Courtney's also doing the four-year BDDE degree. Steve, nice to meet you as well too, also doing the four-year BDDE degree. So again, um, do reach out to, to other students online, both in person, hi, um, uh, and find out which degree they're doing. So as you um, may, have, may have noticed, um, each of these are uh, very flexible jump-off, jump-on points. So some students may find that at the end of first year or after finishing the, all, all of the first year topics, which is 36, year, uh, 36 units, they may go, all right, excellent, I think I need a break now, um, I need to focus on work or family issues, and that gives you a point to exit and graduate with a one-year diploma. Um, down the track, you may then decide to reapply via SATAC to come back in to one of the other later degrees, and you're very welcome to do that as well. So again, keeping in mind that there are these exit points and various entry points as well. Brilliant. So I'm going to talk more uh, about the detail of our degrees. I'm going to be talking about study plans. I'm going to be talking about credit. We're going to be talking about placement and uh, going to give you guys an opportunity to ask questions. So again, if there's anything kind of running around in your head, you're feeling a little bit anxious about, just um, keep it in the back of your mind. And then in uh, the, the second half of today's session, we're going to give you know, a chance to talk about all of those and make sure that you're feeling confident when we start next week. So I'm going to pass over to Cass, who's going to run through some some of the basic essentials about studying here at Flinders, and then it'll be my turn again. Yep. Hello, everybody. So we're going to drive this. So most importantly, when you start at Flinders, you'll be given um, what's called a username and password. So make sure that you... Um, forward your email if you have a personal email to your uni email because everything is done through email um, so make sure that you do that because that's the way we contact you so there's a little bit of information there about how to do that um, and also we have um, a uh, wi-fi system throughout the whole university um, and that's the login for how you can find support across the whole university as well with your wi-fi uh, by now you may have already got your student id card i'm not sure have you all done that Yep, so I don't, no, no, okay, that's okay. So um, up at the main campus is where you can you can find out more information about that. So this is the Sturt campus, but further up the hill um, is the main uni campus and there's uh, the area there where you can go and find out about your uh, student ID card um, and it's, uh, I'm just trying to think of the name of the, the place where they go, Connect? Yes. Flinders Connect, yes. So that's where you need to go. Yeah, the main library, which you can't miss when you go up onto main campus. You have um, the steps up from the bus area. You keep walking all the way up until your left is, um, and look up. That's the library. <laughs> all right. Um, so also a little bit more information there about um, how you can apply for your, um, your ID as well. And also the website of where you find out about student information as well as a new student. So you can log on to the Flinders site and find out there about being a student. By now you would have enrolled, I imagine, in all of your topics, is that right? Yep, good, nods, so we'll probably just move straight through this one. And you've all got your timetable as well? Yes? Great. All right, so um, also at Flinders, when you log on, you'll, you'll be aware of how to, to log on to your courses now. So we're, we're using and navigating a new system here at Flinders, with, with, which is called Canvas. Um, so that's brand new for you. It's brand new for us as well. Um, but you log on through the Flinders Okta dashboard when you log into your topics as well. So each of your topics will have its own online platform as well to work from. And many of us will teach that way if we teach the students online uh, who are with us. Um, but we might also use that in the classroom as well. Now, you all made your way here, those people who are in the room, so well done. So we have a few ways of getting here now. Um, obviously, parking this week, parking is free. But um, I just said to those who were in the room earlier, just make sure that you're aware of parking um, when you come here from next week onwards. Um, it, it's, it's all it's cashless parking, so um, you can use either an app on your phone um, or you can use the different machines that are in the casual car parks as well, or you can get a permit. We also have the train now that comes up and, and stops down here by the hospital area um, and the loop bus that goes around the campus as well. So the buses are well connected to the campus too. I'm just curious about the um, the fine, the parking fine. How much is that these days? Ooh. $40. 40 bucks. 55. 55 so there you go. 
<laughs> Some students have said it's worth risking, but others have said, no, it's not, and they've got several fines in the first few weeks, so yeah, I don't think it's worth risking. <laughs> um, but the train also now is connected with a loop bus as well, so um, that's another way of getting here as well now if you're living further afield. Or, of course, walking, or, or the bike. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Which I sometimes do, anyway. Um, there's also information here about scholarships as well. Um, if you're thinking of applying for scholarships, either now or down the track as well. Um, also, we're very concerned about safety on campus too. So, information there around um, how to, res to um, make sure that you're safe um, on campus. We do have security guards and if you're here at night, you can contact them to, to support you to your car if you need to as well. Uh, also the information there on the email and the phone numbers and if you have an, um, an issue or a concern around unacceptable behaviour to make a report as well. So we're very concerned or aware of safety and make sure that you're all safe while you're here. Um, and also some more information on that around feeling safe and supported, the contacts there um, on campus for the different um, offices and support services that you can, you can utilise while you're here. And as I said, my role is student engagement coordinator. I could assist you with any of those things as well. Also, Flinders has what's known as health counselling and disability services. Um, some of our students do require a disability access plan and you can um, go along to disability support services and find assistance in, in receiving one of those. Um, also, if you wanted to talk to a counsellor or someone in, um, in terms of your medical concerns or anything like that, we have all those services on campus here as well in health counselling and disability. Um, so there's the service contacts there. Also, if you're a bit unsure, I know this is a lot of information early on. Again, if you wanted those a um, bit more information about that, I can help you that, with that um, as a student engagement coordinator as well. So remember me and I can refer you to any of those. Mm. And I'll jump in. So the health services are, um, that you can see a GP, it's bulk build, um, all of the, uh, the count, oh hello, that one's not working as well. Um, you know, counselling supports, um, uh, you know, psychology services, um, they, they, they do the lot, but um, it doesn't have to be university related issues that you talk about, it can be absolutely anything. Also on campus, we have um, a community centre based on campus. Again, this is up on the main campus. It's called Oasis. Um, and uh, throughout, the uh, the, sorry, throughout the semester, I also put on our um, general disability and community inclusion site. I give information updates about what's going on on Oasis as well from time to time. Or you'll also receive information, I think, through your um, online newsletter that you get as a student too. But there's lots of great services provided there if you want to do a yoga class for free or a meditation class. They also have um, a market every Thursday. They do walks, they do discussion groups. So it's very much like our own community centre here on campus. Um, and also now here at Sturt, we've got activities happening in our Sturt library. Um, on a Wednesday as well, you can go there and see, um, see some staff from Oa Oasis as well. So I highly recommend that. It's a great place to, to go when you're feeling like you just wanted to um, catch up on some well-being for yourself and, and relax whilst you're studying. So Oasis is a great, great resource. Um, there's some of the services that they do provide there as well um, and actively promote um, things around the prayer room, conversation groups, equal opportunity providers, advisors, sorry, Pride Network and the Good, uh, Good Vibes Experiment, which I've left some booklets over here for you as well. So again, they're all about your wellbeing uh, whilst you're studying at Flinders as well. So collect some of those things before you leave. Uh, Flinders also has a neurodivergent study support and advocacy group as well, which is new to Flinders, and this is a very active group. So just to promote that as well, some more information there um, with their uh, Facebook page and also uh, their email contact too. So if you're interested in approaching and connecting with that group as well, um, that's some more information there for you too. So... Um, this week is orientation week. There's lots of activities going on here at Sturt campus and at the main campus. Um, and also there's a timetable that you can enrol in different activities as well that again you would have received online. Uh, so please make the most of any of those things that are available to you.
And this is a little bit of information about finding your way at Flinders. So as I said before, we have a Flinders Learning Online platform which now uses Canvas. Um, and that will give you a little bit of information there. Um, there's an actual, um, in, you can enrol um, this week to do those courses um, free up at the library around how to connect with your Learning Online system as well. So have a look at that too if you need to. More information on FUSA. So this is our Flinders University Students Association. Some students like to get very actively involved in the university. Um, but they also provide many services as well uh, around, um, for example, if you need um, some financial assistance or if you'd like to join a club. Uh, over 80 different clubs and networks are provided across the university. Also, again, here at the Sturt campus, when you go um, downstairs near the cafeteria area, there's uh, a room there for students to utilise and you'll be able to see lots of um, activity occurring there this week, but then throughout semester there's other opportunities to get involved in some of these um, clubs and societies as well. I remember seeing a Quidditch club up, uh, up there as well too, so some really unusual and different Tom. things going on. If you've got an idea to start a club, Charmaine. you can do that too. <laughs> Oh yes, also, <laughs> um, Charmaine's a very active gym goer. <laughs> How much, Charmaine? Nine dollars a, Nine dollars a week, so very low cost. So up again, main campus as well, there's a fantastic gym, also has great um, group exercise classes, fully equipped gym, personal physio exercise physiologists, that's a tongue, tongue twister, isn't it? <laughs> Nutritionists, yeah, available to you as students as well. So that's all part of your um, service fee that you can pay, where you pay as a, as a student and that gives you a discount to use the gym as well. Uh, they also have great massage as well. <laughs> I could highly recommend that. <laughs> okay, um, Unify is also uh, the student uh, connection program that's been designed to offer fun interactive sessions to meet uh, uh, peers and friend, join friendships across your university life as well. Um, so check that out as well. So much information we give you when you first start, but again, this is all available online, so you can go back and have a look again later if, if you forget all this. But lots of avenues to meet up with other people, perhaps online or in person as well. And help is always available. So there will be um, orientation videos uh, sent through to you as well and once you've um, signed up for everything this week. Um, essential study guides for uni, student clubs, informational health and wellbeing, which I've, I've covered already. Um, understanding assignments and grades, course study areas um, and welcome sessions across the college. So I think today after this session, lunchtime, there's a, there's a lunchtime gathering for you to, to stay on with if you'd like to today. Um, but also more sessions across the week as well. And then I think Orientation Week, we have a couple of other weeks as well uh, around connection and wellbeing too after this week. Finally, <laughs> um, keep your eye out uh, in your inbox. There's a, a newsletter called Ping that comes to you, um, giving you all this information on a regular basis and what's happening around uni life. Um, connect through Unify. Also, there's the social um, media connections through uh, FUSA as well and Ask Flinders and to join FUSA as well and seek help um, from your student Flinders support, which is the uh, online platform where you can go for support. But again, come to me as student engagement coordinator if this has completely confused you <laughs> and there's too much information for week one, but um, I'm here to guide you through that for the rest of the semester and beyond. All right, so I think that's all from me. I hope, anyway. Well done. <laughs> yes, over to Michelle. That's great. Uh, before Cassandra sits down, did anyone have any burning questions about any of those services, clubs, societies, supports? No? Any questions? Yeah, but, Cass, but, but please wanna... take part. Uni's a great time of your life, so yeah. not just study, there's fun there as well. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Great. Okay, so um, as the undergrad course coordinator, let's talk all things about your degree. So um, there are a, a few interesting points to note about our degree, um, one of which is, is it's, it's 
flexibility. So in contrast to some of the other uh, degrees which may have um, a, a lot more rigidity built in, for instance. So for example, uh, a degree such as speech pathology, you can only do it full time, you can only start at the start of the year, you have to progress at a particular rate um, and, and finish it quite quickly. Um, with our program, you can do it um, either full time, which is 18 units per semester, or you can progress part time. So for most people, part time is two topics per semester or nine units per semester. So um, again, uh, another th important point we like to discuss with students who are new to university. So uh, I'm not sure if um, everyone here in the room or watching online, if this is your first university experience before. Um, however, um, expectations about time management and how much time each topic will take is a really important thing to discuss. So each 4.5 unit topic that you're enrolled in, um, we'll, we're expecting that you would put in around 8 to 10 hours of work per week in that one topic. So um, again, being very conscious and proactive with your time management in your calendar and making sure that you've got hours each week for each topic that you're doing to stay on top of the content to really embed yourself in it and give yourself the best the best shot of not only success but actively learning learning the material so I guess this is a, a you know for a lot of perhaps high school leavers or, or people who are brand new to university life this is probably a, um, a bit of a mismatch in expectations. Some people may think, oh, I can, I, you know, I'm working full time. I reckon I can give a, um, a university a crack full time as well. And that's where we see significant problems. Um, uh, that's where, you know, we, we're, we're counselling students back to. If you're studying full time, I would never suggest more than part time enrolment. Um, it's really important that you scale back and you find a manageable workload. Um, part-time work and part-time study is, 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 a, is an, a, a manageable and achievable um, way of pacing yourself. What we don't want is you to feel completely overwhelmed after first semester and go, oh, it's too much, I can't, I can't prioritise study anymore. Um, we want you to find a, a, good, a good sustainable way forward. Um, the sector needs our graduates, we want you to be successful in getting out there. So again, we need graduates from the one year, two year, three year degrees, and we need DEs out there stat. <laughs> so we want you guys to be successful. Um, again, uh, so again, do consider your available time and don't overcommit. If you have some concerns or would like to have a chat about it, myself and Cass uh, are here to help you make some good decisions about what's going to be sustainable for you. Um, we've got some critical enrolment dates. There's a link here. So we've got something called, we were talking earlier about um, a census date. So that is at the end of week four. Um, at the end of week four, that's a chance for you to go, oh, actually, I think I've probably enrolled in too many topics than I think I'm comfortable with or something's changed in my life. I need to withdraw from one or two or more topics. If, yeah, if you do it before census date, first of all, you don't pay for the topic. Um, and you also don't get a fail grade um, um, on your academic transcript, which is your record um, when, you, when you finish of, uh, of, of your grades and your GPA or grade point average. So making a decision by the, you know, by the end of uh, week four um, uh, is a really sort of important thing to do to save you money and, um, and look after your transcript. Okay, so we've got our contact details there again. So again, balancing being proactive in managing your time is the key to success with life generally, but definitely when you add in a significant extra, significant um, task such as university degree. Um, so again, um, you know, really jump on and create your weekly, weekly planner. Um, there's some tips up there. There's a link here for how you can help balance your uni, uh, uni work um, commitments and, and your life. Um, due date tactics, maximising your time, uh, how to tackle your assessments small and early, one bite at a time, uh, etc. So again, um, this is just an example, but uh, for me, um, uh, you know, I have a busy, busy job with many, many components in my job. I'm also um, a mum. Um, I've got, you know, we all have different responsibilities. I'm a, uh, a you know, I have, I have family responsibilities. Um, so blocking out 
day by day, hour by hour, what I'm doing uh, guarantees that um, I'm, I'm using all, all of my available hours, you know, the most productively, and I'm factoring in time for family, I'm factoring in time to watch Netflix, I'm factoring in time to, you know, have, um, you know, exercise and, and, and be healthy and be able to sustain all the various balls in the air. So, again, um, you know, finding different apps um, to help you manage this is, is going to, you know, can be really, really helpful. But also recruit people in your life to help you with this as well too. Uni can be a very lonely experience for some people, but getting people in your support circle around you, helping you and keeping you accountable to these kind of things um, and supporting each other when things get a little bit tough, um, um, you know, and, and certainly reach out to all of us here at Flinders for support early. Okay, we've talked about email. Thank you, Cass. Again, I'm mentioning it twice because it's so incredibly critical. Um, we, everything will come to your uni email address. So make sure you're, you divert it to whichever one you use all the time, constantly. All the time. <laughs> um, excellent. We will, we will never contact, aside from that email that I sent everyone welcoming you to the university, we will never send an email to your personal address. Everything will only be to your Flinders at flinders.edu.au um, email address now. Great. Now, we've got some uh, study plans. So, as course coordinator, um, if you, you know, I'm the person you come to if you want to make a change, if something didn't quite go as planned, um, uh, we need to make some modifications to your study plan. But um, the thing to be mindful of is that we've got topics that are designed in our curriculums. We've got first year topics that inform second year topics, that inform third year topics, that inform fourth year topics. So there are some topics that have what are called prerequisites. So you need to have met, you need to have passed certain topics before you can enrol in others. Uh, you need to have passed a certain number of first year topics before you can move on to second year topics, etc. So it's a little bit more complex rather than picking the topics that, um, you know, just by looking at the timetable or by looking at topics that are immediately relevant to your job right now, um, uh, all sorts of things. So they are designed in this way for a particular reason. Now, um, we, we have um, a, a number of mid-year entry students, so this year we've got 35 students joining our degrees mid-year um, along with you. Uh, now, if you are, there's a few things to mention. If you're doing the one, the two or the three year degree, um, um, the progress, um, you know, it, uh, um, you, you, can, you, can, you can do full-time study, four topics a semester, no problems at all. Um, however, if you're enrolled in the four-year Bachelor of Disability and Developmental Education degree and you want to do this full-time, it's important to note um, that um, um, to maintain full-time, it's going to take four and a half years to complete the full four-year degree. The reason for that is because um, you need to have completed all the first three years of the degree before you can start fourth-year topics. So if that's you, um, and um, um, I've designed a study plan here for you where you can see you, you do, you can, you, you, you've got three topics every semester two and four topics every semester one. And that will help you progress to a point where you've finished all of third year before you start fourth year topics or DSRS four something, something, something coded topics. Please come and speak with me if you've got any questions or concerns about that. Um, some students uh, are very comfortable with this um, in terms of having a, a slightly lighter load every second semester that may fit if you're working or have other commitments. Um, if, however, you want to smash it out in four years full time, perhaps starting in um, semester one may be a better option and we can talk about that as well too. Um, excellent. So, uh, so oh, I think the other thing to mention is if you're receiving um, uh, government support to study, uh, the government um, will recognise three topics a semester or 13.5 units as full time and you'd meet eligibility for, for government support. From the university's perspective, full time means 18 units or four topics a semester. So when we, we say full time, that's what we mean but the government can also include three topics. But it just means, yeah, so each year we've got 36 units to complete, year one, year two, year three, year four. Any questions? Come and have a chat with me about that. 
So you can see on this mid-year study plan, um, uh, uh, um, I've also indicated the points at which you might like you might might be interested in exiting with if you need to. So again, after you've finished the first 36 units or the, all of the first year topics, you can exit with a diploma, exit with a grad, a grad um, sorry, an associate degree after 72 units, which is the first two years of the degree. You can, grad, you can exit with a three year B, Bachelor of Disability and Community Inclusion after you finish all of the first three years of the degree. And uh, finally, if you finish the full 144 units, then you're gonna be graduating um, with a BDDE and uh, therefore I'll talk a bit more about what, what um, each of those points will, um, not, if, what each of those exit points um, uh, um, uh, can launch you into in, in, in terms of job opportunities. Um, a lot of students will ask about credit uh, or recognition of prior learning. Um, so if you've done a certificate for or higher qualification previously, um, you'll be eligible for certain um, 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 credit for certain topics. Um, if you've done uh, 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 qualifications that um, are at an equivalent, what are we, oh, yeah, it's complex, but if you, if you, if you feel you've done previous study, uh, please do come and speak with me and we can talk about credit applications. Um, we also have, um, you'll notice that we also, in, across the full four years of, uh, of our curriculum, we have one, two, three, four, uh, four placements. So one in second year, one in third year, two in fourth year. Uh, so if you've been working in the disability sector, um, uh, then you can apply for credit for the first placement, which is in the end of, well, which is in second year, which is DSRS 2232 Practicum 1. So we do have a lot of students who uh, come and join us in our degrees who have been working in the disability sector. Um, so please do come and have a chat to me if this is something that might be relevant for you. There's, uh, that's the only credit for placement that's available over, the, over, over, um, over our curriculum. Um, and the reason for that is um, our, our four-year BDDE uh, curriculum is an accredited program. It's a professional degree. You need to be assessed at each of those other points as competent and meeting learning outcomes so that you can safely go out and work as a developmental educator or a positive behaviour support um, practitioner. So placements, <laughs> um, what's, what's really critical is, so again, I've mentioned here, you're starting your first placement um, in, in when you get to year two of the curriculum. Um, and there are uh, a number of compliance requirements. Uh, and um, probably, uh, so there's things such as, oh gosh, Charmaine. NDIS worker, NDIS worker screening checks. National police, clearance, National police clearance, working with children, aged care. The ran online, excellent, great. Exactly, so when you get to the end of your first year and you know that you've got a placement coming up the following semester, that's the point where you need to have a look at your compliance list and actively make sure they're all in place because when you enrol in the topic, let's say you enrol in PRAC, um, let's say you're due to do PRAC in semester one uh, next year. Um, around, I don't know, would you say around um, November, December, perhaps the previous, the previous year, you would start getting all of those things in place. Um, there are some costs associated with some of those. So in total at this point, probably around 100 and... If, if you're yes. So as soon as a student is enrolled, um, they will hear from the placement team and myself usually and we'll, and we'll give you that link to say to get started. But if you apply for your clearances through the placement team, you can apply for three or four of them in one hit, NDIS, the, work, the working with children and one of the others, the aged one, and it's only one fee. So you're much better off to go through the uni system. Um, and uh, I think the online courses are free, but y you need to just be ready to go uh, as early as you can because w uh, the NDIS worker screening sometimes takes three months to come back. Yeah. Excellent. So that's our hot tip. 
We find a lot of students are not prepared with their compliances when they enrol and they miss the opportunity. So by about week one, if all those compliances aren't up on the system, then you can't do placement that semester. You have to wait till the next semester. So uh, don't let it delay your study progress. Um, be organised, be proactive. Uh, and come and ask myself or Charmaine if you've got any questions about, about those as well. Fantastic. So career pathways. So we're, um, uh, uh, I'll, I'll start off with the four-year BDDE degree. So students who um, uh, graduate here, um, this is a, a, a fully registered um, a degree. Um, so you have um, full um, uh, membership with the DEAI or our professional association, which is Developmental Educators Australia Incorporated. Uh, and you're also eligible for membership with Behaviour Support Practitioners Australia as well. And you can, um, you're eligible to work as a developmental educator across Australia. Um, and if PBS is something that really excites you, you can choose to work as a PBS practitioner as well. Um, the, uh, just a quick hands up, how many in the room have heard of a developmental educator before? Cracker, nice work, I'm so excited. Everyone's put their hand up, how cool. Okay, I'll talk a little bit more about that later. However, um, we also, um, our graduates from our one year, two year and three year degrees are uh, again um, um, eligible for professional membership with National Disability Practitioners um, and again are really strongly positioned to step into a range of management roles, policy leadership roles across disability and community services sectors, um, disability advocacy, uh, many of our graduates step in um, as, as really well prepared NDIS planners and support coordinators. Um, we've got case managers working across so many different sectors in Australia, um, um, but also leadership positions in teams, uh, program coordinators, etc. So really a great opportunity to have some, some um, uh, firm theoretical foundations um, uh, to inform your practice. So quickly, um, uh, just as a bit of a recap, um, who are developmental educators? So we can see our logo for the DEAI here. Um, you need full membership with the DAI to be a developmental educator in Australia. Uh, and we've got two programs here at Flinders that are registered um, or accredited, our four-year BDDE, but also our two-year master's degree. So if you've got colleagues or friends who do have an, another undergraduate degree, let's say um, um, support, um, social work for instance, um, and they're interested in being a developmental educator, then they could apply to the two year masters um, of, de uh, develop, um, of um, disability policy leadership developmental education uh, and then be accredited uh, uh, to do that as well. So again, um, student membership is really so cheap. It's only uh, 49 bucks. But as first year students, you get your first year free. So I strongly, strongly, strongly encourage you to sign up as a student member, start being part of the DEAI community, uh, jump on and join some of the social, um, social um, yeah, discussion boards, things like that. Come to PD, uh, professional development events, you know, meet meet other DEs and uh, and start getting yourself known. I can say with my hand on my heart, absolutely all of our our graduates uh, step into DE roles. Um, um, uh, you know, they're, they're offered jobs while they're still studying. You can't work as a developmental educator until you have full membership. However, um, 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 many of them are, are stepping into, um, uh, what are they called, um, allied health assistant roles, working with DEs, um, particularly in, um, you know, second, third, fourth, uh, fourth year while they're studying too. Um, okay, great. So, um, you know, DEs very much as, as uh, Sally mentioned earlier, we, we work from a strong human rights framework. Um, we work with people across the full spectrum of, of life from um, birth to death, a lot, there's a lot of misconception that DEs only work with kids because of the word educator, not the case. Um, uh, my own work uh, has been all, you know, always with adults. Um, uh, and again, to achieve full and effective inclusion society, we're very much holistic. So we consider the whole person and their socio-cultural context uh, and collaborate um, with, work with people with disability to promote inclusion and address attitudinal and environmental barriers. 
So you can see here, this is a little bit small to see, but if you do check out the DEAI has, um, we've launched our first uh, a scope of practice for developmental educators. Um, so do jump on and look at that scope of practice, which very clearly describes how we work and the types of uh, um, uh, roles that developmental educators um, uh, can do. So we have four major areas. We've got skill development, behaviour support, disability advocacy and access education and capacity building. Uh, I'm not going to sort of jump into these in too much detail, but you can see in the, in the following slides we do provide some examples of how DEs work in each of these areas. So uh, skill development is probably one of the most common um, um, areas that DEs are working, uh, developing skills with people with disability. So uh, DEs will conduct a range of developmental, functional and behavioural assessments. Um, again, engaging collaborative planning and goal setting, planning for life stages and transitions, so supporting people from the move from primary school to high school or from high school to, to life after high school, to uni, to, to work, um, uh, transitioning from one home environment to another one. Um, uh, again, uh, um, employing evidence-based uh, instructional strategies, teaching skills in a variety of life domains. Uh, and implementing monitoring and reviewing support plans. One of the areas uh, of specialty that DEs also hold is in behaviour support. So here at Flinders, we have um, uh, um, some of the, uh, um, you know, the best researchers in behaviour support in Australia here who have designed and teaching our curriculum. Um, we also, as fourth year students, you'll be doing a lot of uh, focus. There's uh, three topics that focus on behaviour support. Um, uh, so again, we're making sure that um, you have the skills to uh, effectively be behaviour support practitioners. If it's not an area of, of interest of yours that you're able to work in collaboration with or refer on to or pick the cowboys out there in the industry and avoid them, um, it's, a, it's an interesting space out there. But our, our graduates are certainly um, the most well, rigorously prepared with our, with our team of um, um, behaviour support researchers. Um, excellent. So, uh, again, um, a few points here. Um, you can pursue a career as a PBS practitioner, uh, engaging in functional behavioural assessment and formulation, uh, doing functional analyses, uh, developing and implementing person-centred and multi-component PBS intervention plans, um, reducing reliance on restrictive practices, coaching and supporting stakeholders, uh, engaging in therapeutic skill development, and also acting as PBS supervisors yourselves and conducting training and education in that space. Disability advocacy is another area that, um, that DEs often step into. Uh, again, there's a lot of collaboration. Um, uh, are looking to explore and change systems together with people with disabilities. Um, again, DEs recognise and respond to ableism in individual actions, organisational and institutional systems, policies and practices, practices, and advocate for justice and change. So every every topic that you'll be studying reiterates this framework, this lens, um, encourages you to to look for uh, again, um, you know, what's what might be ableist approaches or policies or uh, looking at, um, uh, at, again, looking, actively looking at different things um, um, uh, in different scenarios. So again, uh, a lot of, as DEs, we promote development of self-advocacy skills for people with disability. Uh, we undertake individual and systemic advocacy. Um, you, um, we always engage in, and promote co-design practice. Um, uh, conduct research uh, and inform policy uh, and very much involve communities, working groups and boards. So one point to mention is um, once you've finished either the three-year BDCI degree or the four-year BDDE degree, you may be interested in research. Uh, that's the career pathway that myself and Cass have chosen. So when we finished, we then did an honours year, which is one year full-time or two years part-time. And that then gave us an opportunity to do a PhD afterwards. So again, a PhD is a, a research apprenticeship in a sense. It's three years full time or six years part time. 
or eight or eight. <laughs> but uh, it, 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 it um, hones your skills as researchers, as writers, as communi you know, research communicators as well. So there's a number of us who have taken that particular career pathway uh, and again, you know, communicating results through journal articles and other, other ways of communicating with industry and, uh, and communities. So again, many of you may be interested in that pathway too. If you are, if you think, oh wow, I can see myself as a researcher or see research skills as being advantageous in your career. A lot of people in government are looking for people with hone, uh, highly honed research skills. Uh, that's definitely a really cool pathway. And the other area for our DEs is um, access education and capacity building. Again, so improving um, access and participation uh, for people with disabilities in health, education, work and community. Again, so a whole range of um, wonderful opportunities to help break down barriers. Um, Excellent. So I'll flick through these last examples here and also yeah, building capacity for people themselves, their families and their communities. So DEs are everywhere. We see DEs in accommodation set settings, in disability services, early childhood intervention. So one of our fourth year topics is specific on early childhood intervention. Um, we, we are increasingly, we're, we're having um, meetings right now with the education department in South Australia as uh, step one. Um, so we'll be seeing DEs all through education services. Um, in employment settings, uh, we see a lot of like, an amazing impact of DEs in supporting people in open employment and, uh, and changing building capacity of all sorts of employers. Uh, correctional institutions and justice system, that is a huge, huge opportunity for DEs. They are begging for our graduates um, uh, and the phenomenal impact of, you know, you can imagine the, the exceptionally high number of people with a disability who are uh, in our, um, our justice system and the levels of support that people need to uh, um, uh, reorient back uh, back into the community and, 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 and live positive, positive, meaningful lives. Um, healthcare rehabilitation settings, that was an area that um, Charmaine and Jamie and myself had a strong interest in, in brain injury rehab. Um, aged care, we've got local, state and federal government, every level of government we've got DEs. We've got uh, in South Australia the, um, oh goodness, what's, uh, uh, we've got DEs in some of the highest levels of the NDIA. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, so some phenomenal, phenomenal people who have been leading the path for, for DEs across government. Um, in non-for-profit organisations, private practice. So again, um, uh, uh, many of our DEs, once they get a few years of um, supervision under their belt, um, a few years of experience after graduating, um, um, uh, they may set up their own private practice or work with other DEs or other, um, we've got many, many of our graduates who have um, set up businesses with um, psychologists, with um, occupational therapists, speech pathologists, physios, and created their own small practice as well to providing um, multidisciplinary services. And of course, you may find yourself in a university or a research facility. <laughs> Great. Good. So a, a lot of different pathways and a lot of different exciting opportunities for, for um, our career. Um, I'm going to stop here and uh, throw it to you guys and see if anyone had any questions at all um, about the topics perhaps that you're enrolled in, um, questions about um, um, career opportunities or uh, absolutely anything at all. Could be. Anything that you're feeling a little bit nervous about starting? <laughs> so just, I'm going to pick on the people in the room. So um, uh, in terms of uh, study progress, so who here is enrolled full-time? Awesome. Okay, everyone in the room is enrolled full-time. No problems at all. Great. Excellent. Um, and, and I've also printed out... Um, uh, again, the study plans for mid-year entry. So you may already have these, but you're welcome to pass them around. Um, what I might do, actually, um, while I'm waiting for you guys to think if you've got any questions, what I'm going to do is jump on and show you uh, a couple of websites. So this one here, 
is called our Disability and Community Inclusion General Information Flow Site. So when I sent you the, um, the email originally introducing myself and welcoming you to the deg uh, degree and in telling you about today's information session, I said all of today's information and our recording, the PowerPoints and the recording is going to be up on this flow site. So this is what it is and I'll send you the link in an email as well. Um, but uh, this is, this is uh, the flow site is uh, something called Flinders Learning Online and it's how we used to deliver all of our topics up until this point. <laughs> um, and from semester two, we're transitioning to something called Canvas. However, this site, which contains a lot of general information, is still going to be live this semester. So this is still where you're going to find general information about our course and about our orientation information. And we're going to be sending you announcements um, about job opportunities, about, um, oh gosh, anything. Dates, Important dates, reminders, census dates coming up next week. Have a think. Um, you know. That's right. So watch out for those. Also, yeah, look in your clutter or your junk folder as well too. <laughs> um, but this is what that looks like. So when you jump on here, um, I'm just going to scroll down. There's a lot of postgrad course information which Jamie's popped up. So you can see this is shared with undergrad and postgrad disability course information. If you scroll down a little bit, you'll see a little slide here on. Whoops links on orientation and if you click on that you'll see this is where I'm going to put today's information so um, I'm going to put a link here to the workshop recording a link to the, the slide so that you can play with all the links along the way and I'm also um, this is also where we're going to have uh, copies of the study plans as well just in case you haven't been able to find them in the general Flinders Uni email search system. <laughs> um, so um, if we have a look at the, um, the study plans now, let me just pull this one up. So this is the mid-year one that I've just physically passed around. To, whoops, not that one. Uh, this one. So the mid-year, if you're doing the BDD, for instance, for, uh, um, um, full time, um, then um, what we're recommending is you do three topics in semester two and then four topics in semester one. Three topics semester two, four topics semester one, if you're planning to proceed full time. So uh, for instance, the first three topics we would probably recommend you stick with uh, might be, really it could be any of them, um, but in semester two, we've got introduction to communication, diversity and support needs, critical issues in disability practice uh, and disability service landscape. Um, any of but really any of our semester two first year topics are fine. So again, if you want to confirm anything with me, you're a little bit confused, come uh, send me an email. Um, then in semester one next year, you're going to be uh, cracking on with our, um, our first semester topic. So DSRS one topic, so this is perspectives on disability, which is Jamie's topic. Uh, introduction to disability and neurodiversity, which is my topic. Um, and also I'm going to be suggesting you do a couple of things here. Um, I'm going to suggest you're going to be enrolling in DSRS 2239, Introduction to Principles of Learning and Instruction at this point. And then you're going to be doing Research and Study Skills 1. So you'll notice that there are topics that um, are coded DSRS and they're topics that belong to our discipline, so Disability and Community Inclusion. They're staffed by us. Then there are topics such as Health 1010, for instance, and they're, they're owned by Health Sciences. Um, however, in Health 1010, for instance, that, that's, that's an example of a topic that you're going to be studying with. It's core for us, it's core for um, Health Sciences, it's core for well, Occupational Therapy and Physiotherapy, um, it's core for a lot of them. So it's where everyone's you know, studying together. Um, okay, were there any other questions as we're going, as I'm um, leading you through? Yes, yeah, in the bag. Hello. Uh, my name is, um, yes, please, just that one. Um, hang on, we're just going to bring you a, a mic. Yeah, let's try that. Well, let's bring you a microphone so the recording so can capture your question. Okay. 
Uh, first of all, good morning, and I'm sorry I've been late. <laughs> yeah, so my name is uh, Egi, but my complete name is Euphragia de Menezes Soros. It's a bit uh, long, so it's hard for you to call. So just call me Egi, and I'm from Timor-Leste. Yeah, so uh, my question is uh, about the topic. So I, uh, I already registered for to four topics. And uh, here it's only three topics, so I'm a bit confused yeah, about and that. You're enrolled in the three year Bachelor of Disability and Community Inclusion degree? Um, developmental Education. You're enrolled in the four year degree, okay. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, then, yes, yes. So, um, uh, uh, yes, we might have a chat at the end, but that's right. Um, because, um, um, are you on an Australia Award uh, yes, scholarship uh, yeah. as yes. well, too? Yes. yes. Let's have a chat at the end because, um, again, I, I mentioned a little bit earlier, um, students need to complete all of the third year topics before they can enrol in the fourth year topics. So um, if you start mid-year, that means if you did four, 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 there would be an entire semester in oh. semester two yeah. at, uh, at the end of third year, there would there be no topics for you to do before you could start fourth year. Mm. So this just enables you to progress 13, you know, uh, progress equally um, all the way through. So we might have a chat about um, uh, the expectations and, and the conditions of the scholarship um, um, with, with that one as well too. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anyone else got a question while I'm here? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I was just wondering, I'm thinking of deferring a semester. Yeah possibly next year, just to do some travel. Okay. How will that, that will affect me, I'm guessing? <laughs> That'll be a, a unique study plan. <laughs> yeah. um, no, that's all possible. It just okay. means that um, I, we'll have to have a bespoke study plan for you. Okay. It may, it, it, it will probably mean some topics may kind of have to, you know, it will take longer to finish the degree, yep. um, but we'll, we can certainly negotiate and uh, what I do, particularly for our online students as well. You can meet me in person or we can do an online Teams meeting and we'll go through and we'll design it together um, because there are things that you're going to be mindful of in your life that you know this is probably going to be a time where I can probably accelerate, this is a time I'll have to slow down and we can we can plan. Okay, cool. <laughs> but no, it's not a game changer. The, there are a few things to keep in mind because these are, um, uh, it's an accredited degree, the four years of accredited program. You do need to complete it in eight years part time. So you've got eight years to complete the full program. Uh, and that's, uh, it's very, very common with all accredited um, professional degrees across allied health, health, psychology, for instance. Um, uh, because uh, we need to guarantee that you're, you have a certain level of recency of theoretical knowledge. Otherwise, we've got people graduating 20 years ago who started topics, you know, <laughs> and it's so out of date. So, yes, just keep in mind we've got eight years to finish the four year degree. Good. Mm. So, again, uh, I'll let you. Um, uh, uh, so continuing, if I just make this a little bit larger, because I'm just conscious this is very small on our screen. Um, okay, so there are, again, like I was talking about prerequisites before. So there are some topics, um, again, so like health, our health topics, we've got research and study skills one, and that needs to be completed before you can do research and study skills two. And that needs to be completed before you can do research and study skills three because they all build knowledge. So keeping those kind of things in mind is important because sometimes if you miss a topic in one semester, not all, um, our topics aren't offered in both semesters and that's probably another thing to be mindful of. Um, we get a lot of requests from students saying, oh, could we please have topics available like in summer, um, uh, over summer periods or as intensives? And um, we would very much love to offer, <laughs> offer that. Um, uh, and unfortunately, until our student numbers increase and um, you know, we, we, we're still at this point locked into some, um, topics being offered in, 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 in certain semesters. So there's not an enormous amount of flexibility in terms of, oh, perhaps I didn't pass this topic this semester, perhaps I can repeat it next semester. You often have to wait until that topic's available again the following year. 
Uh, let's have a think. What else? Um, uh, so, yeah, applying for credit. We talked about credit. Um, were there any questions about credit applications, perhaps? No. Um, one of the topics in, our, in the first year of our curriculum um, is an option topic. Uh, or a, uh, So this is a 4.5 unit topic that you can pick from a suite of topics that we identify. So we've got a, a list here. This list sort of grows and changes depending on what's, what's available where. Um, but if you do have, if you're not new to study, if you've done an, uh, you know, a bit of another degree before, for instance, or you've done a cert for or higher in anything, you can get credit to um, um, uh, credit credit for that for that for that option topic. So that means you don't need to do it. You've got that four point five units of credit. So again, speak to me if you think that's something that might be relevant for you. Um, unfortunately, we we don't give credit for anything below a certificate four. So cert three, cert two, cert ones um, um, aren't at the level that the university recognises um, for credit, but cert fours and higher definitely. So even if you're not sure if it's directly relevant, come and have a chat with me and I'll have a look. Great. Okay, good. Um, so again, moving through, uh, what else do we have? By the time you get to third year, um, you're also going to get a chance to do a, a really interesting topic on entrepreneurship and small business um, up here in the business school here. The reason we've included that is because so... Um, you know, disability is very much in a business landscape in Australia. Uh, and uh, when we were designing our curriculum, uh, we got a lot of feedback from DEs and industry partners saying, really, you know, it's really important for your graduates to be mindful and aware of, uh, uh, again, um, being prepared for small business and business cultures. Um, uh, so that's uh, it's a really great sort of eye-opener as well too, particularly if you're, you know, well, everything is business now. Um, right, um, your second placement um, occurs um, around the end of your third year, so um, that's about a 150 hour placement where again um, you get to select where you do that particular placement uh, and you negotiate that with the placement coordinator and um, uh, I'm just trying to think, is there any, it's project based. Um, again, so there's a lot of flexibility with our placements. Our placements are topics that are offered in every semester. So, um, uh, and, and again, you can negotiate with the placement coordinator um, to uh, perhaps do it, you can do it you know, more intensively, you can do it over a longer protracted period of time, um, as long as uh, you, know, um, you and the agency and the university are all in agreement. So we do have some students, for instance, who because of uh, access plan um, um, uh, and, and reasonable accommodations um, have negotiated to do a placement um, very slowly over almost the full year um, so that they can do that very, very, very slowly and, and have a successful placement experience. We've got other students who um, have negotiated to do a very short intensive block placement um, um, during one of the, the holiday periods. Um, so again, um, uh, plan ahead have conversations early with a placement coordinator, a lot of things might be possible. Even possible over overseas placements. <laughs> So Charmaine was just saying a lot of students can also start that placement in January and knock that off before the semester, other semester topics start as well. Great. Uh, and for those of you doing the fourth, uh, the four year degree, um, um, fourth year, you can see here the, the topics in fourth year are very prescribed, so you need to have passed the first year, uh, first semester topics before you can enrol in the second semester topics. Um, so we do have um, some really exciting topics on PBS, on delivering therapeutic supports, on early childhood intervention. Uh, we've got a, a, another fantastic uh, DE placement, which is 150 hours, working under the supervision um, of a DE or another allied health professional. Uh, and of course our capstone, um, which is the very final topic you do, the very last nine units of your degree, which orients you to your, to your role as a graduate entry DE, 
Um, again, we make sure that you're completely comfortable in explaining and describing and exploring some of the issues that DEs are facing out in practice. Uh, and it's also a great opportunity to be doing a industry generated project. So you work um, uh, with uh, an industry partner, they're your client, uh, you come in and uh, discuss and, and, and develop a, a project and deliver a project for them. So it's one way of our final year students kind of giving back to industry a little bit there at the end. And a fantastic way, really, I mean, how many students get job offers from this? People saying, I'm, you need to be working in our team, we need you. Um, so it's a wonderful stepping stone in as well. Okay. So, um, so that's where you're going to find our, our course information uh, on this site here. Now, I'm also going to just briefly show um, an example of a Canvas site. So, um, just for those of you in the room, um, just a bit of a hands up. Has anyone jumped on any of their topics on Canvas yet and had a look at those? Okay, one person, great. Okay, so you know, it's O-Week, so um, all students get access to all the topics that they're enrolled in for that semester from O-Week, so um, from yesterday. Um, so if I jump on to, so this is our, uh, your, your student homepage. Um, if I go on to, let's go to Quick Links, I'm gonna go down to Okta. So this is your Flinders dashboard. And this is where you have all the different apps that you might use. There's Flow up here, and Canvas is where you're going to find all of your topics that you're enrolled in. So, hello. Thank you. <laughs> oh, goodness, come back. Okay, go away. Um, and you'll have um, some of the, the, the topics that you're enrolled in here. Now, ooh, can, I, can I show perhaps, J Jamie, can I show yours? All right. Okay, so I have to go a little bit differently because um, I'm just going to find yours a different way. Just ignore this bit for a minute. Your all of yours will be visible. All of yours will be like over your colored tiles. That's right. I just I'm going back in to try and find one of our first year ones. So let's click on critical issues. Great. Okay, so again with Canvas, there's Jamie. <laughs> it's terrible that so I this lovely pose. Star, and it just it's it's picked a different one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so with Canvas. Yeah, sorry, yes, I can do student view. Where is student view? Oh, I can't do student. No worries, excellent. But you can see on, a, on a, all of your topics will look look a little similar to this on the home page. Um, you've got links to the different modules in your home page. This is the DCI General Information Flow site we were just at. So if you want to go back to that, you can just click on this link. Um, this is our research. If you want to know what kind of research is coming out of our, our discipline, um, you can check us out here. And for students in the four-year degree, if you want to check out the DEAI page, you can just, you can quickly jump straight in there and see what's going on. So um, you'll see a lot of embedded videos. So if we, you can also see this is like a navigation panel down here to the side as well. So to start, you just click on your modules, and then you can see uh, there's all these different modules um, down below, and you work through it. You can you can jump to them this way, or you can do something. So if we jump here, we've got some topic information here. Uh, you can read about the topic, read about the learning outcomes, etc. You can find out about the readings. So the readings for this topic, you've got a, you can click on this link here on the side, readings. Um, you can also learn about tutorials. So with all of our topics, we have pre-recorded lectures. And then you watch the lectures, you do the reading for that week. You do whatever activity is on the on the Canvas site for that week, and then you come to the tutorials. 
So uh, the tutorials will either be in person if you're enrolled um, um, here at Flinders, you come to one of the rooms and I'm happy to go for a walk with, with you guys after today's session to find your room if you're not sure where you're going. Um, or we've got online uh, tutorials via Teams. So you log on to that particular time, you join your, join your tutor group, participate in the activities that way. So it's a great way of being connected to your peers, a great way to connect with your tutors, ask questions and be actively involved in a topic week to week to week and keep you, keep you, keep you on track. So this is where those, now down the bottom right of every page, we've got a next button. You may miss it, it's not very visible. So I'm gonna click next, so that's gonna take me to the next page. So these are all the, 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 the details for the topic coordinator and the tutors. I'm gonna click next. We've got some information on health and counselling, awesome. There's some frequently asked questions here. So you can see everything, this all relates to topic information. Um, then there's a lovely general discussion forums. We've got some students already who are jumping in and introducing themselves. Keep on next. Uh, if you want to give some anonymous feedback, you can do that there. Um, this is where you learn about all the assignments. Now, at Flinders Uni, we've got something called a Statement of Assessment Methods, and this is a really important document, um, and you can see them here, there's the link here, the SAM, the Statement of Assessment Methods, and that tells you, for each topic, what exactly what the assessments are um, in, in terms of um, uh, the, the, the total proportion of marks, the penalties, if it's a hurdle task or not, how it links to the learning outcomes. So, if you're, you know, you're, you, you want a quick look at how many assessments are in this topic and what they're all worth and, and, what, uh, and links to the assessment policies, so you understand what happens if you miss an assessment or you perhaps don't pass an assessment or you submit it late, what the implications are, these are all the, the official university policies here that relate to those. So do, do remember to check the statement of assessment methods because that's a, it's a really good Yes, no, no, no. Have a have a, um, a microphone, Jamie. Okay, so I guess this comes from my experience because I've got kids that are doing year eleven at the moment, and so they're talking to me about. Oh, sorry. Good job. Am I in the camera now? You are now. Okay, sorry. All right. So this comes from my experience last semester. So my kids are doing year 11 and they're going, oh, well, I passed like three out of the four assignments, so I'll be fine. I'll pass the topic. I just want students to be aware that at university, sometimes it doesn't work that way. And sometimes there are assessments which we call hurdle tasks and you'll see them in the SAM. There are some assessments that you actually need to pass in order to pass the topic. So thinking, oh, well, I've done two out of three of the assignments and I did all right, so I should be fine and I should pass overall, might mean that you don't pass the topic because you haven't passed a compulsory assessment, which is called a hurdle task. So just so that you're aware of that, because I think sometimes that can be a little bit confusing in your first semester. And it, it is, the, the, it'll be different in each topic, whichever tasks are a hurdle task or not. So it, it's just important to understand that, I think. Yes, exactly. That's really great. Thank you. Wonderful. So, um, oh, that's okay. Um, you don't need that one. Got enough microphones for sure. I think I'm okay. Um, all right. So again, if you get lost, you just go back to the modules here, back up to modules, and then you can keep, you know, so we can, we've gone through the information, we've got, we've got gone through the communication. Um, we were halfway through going through the assessments. Um, um, but if we jump down, you can also see all the weekly modules here as well too. Um, with the, all of these, you can collapse them um, and you can expand them as well too. So if we start off with a week one module, um, again, we can see week one um, and the introduction tells you what uh, the discussion, so you can click on the link to introduce yourself and then click next etc etc so for this week one the lecture is here so we've got a 15 minute lecture um, by um, 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 our academic lead Sally Robertson now you also have uh, the PowerPoint slides themselves um, uh, that you can access um, so you go through and you watch them um, go through next 
Uh, and then there are some further activities here. So um, in this one here, you're going to watch this video and that you're going to be discussing in your tutorial. So there's a lot of prep work to do before you come to your tutorial. So be prepared rather than I think well, we, we see a lot of first year uni students kind of go, oh, I'll just rock up to the tutor because that's the thing in my diary. Um, and they're, they're not oriented to the kind of things that they're going to be talking about. So to really maximise your time, um, come in. Come in prepared. Um, in saying that, if it's been a horrific week and everything's fallen apart and you haven't done the work, please don't feel embarrassed to come to the tutorial anyway. It's still okay. No one's going to, you know, embarrass you for not having done the work. Um, I think that just being part of the culture is also valuable, um, but really to be, you know, to, 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 to be a really effective learner, be prepared, come in prepared, come in ready. Um, great, so there's a reading here, so I'm going to jump over to the readings link and I can see in a second the readings are uh, organised week by week. So if I click on week one, um, all of our readings are available online, so you don't have to physically come into the library anymore. Um, so there's a book chapter here, so I can view that by clicking on it. There's a, you know all sorts of various bits and pieces going on. So I'm going to go back to the modules. I'm going to go back to my, where were we, tutorial information. Got the links. You're going to be writing a, a, a journal, a self-reflection journal in that topic. It gives you some prompts and the things that you can write. And then you've come to the end of week one. I'm going to stop there. I'm going to stop there. So, as a, as a, as a, pr as a prompt, um, just uh, welcome to Flinders, um, welcome to Canvas. We are all very new to this. So, we're designing, not designing, we're, yeah, we're actually, we're designing our Canvas topics now. Uh, we haven't been given a lot of time to do this. Um, so your topics may be in development. Uh, all the work's there, all the, all the, uh, but, but we're, we're trying to get it.